in government agencies to stand up for people and not roll over to, for, to, to private companies who were trying to make a profit was just not there. Farmers had their GM crops pulled up. Food companies had their brands targeted. Supermarkets were pressured to dump GMOs from their shelves. There was now a broad-based popular movement, angry that GM food had been introduced without consultation. In Europe, there's a seamless web between culture and cuisine. The way food is grown, the way uh, the agricultural areas are preserved, the way food is processed and served, all of that is a deep statement of the values of each country in which that food is grown. Europeans were saying, we don't want a handful of life science companies to undermine the cultural values behind our food and food policies in Europe. There's no benefit to European consumers, uh, and there are risks, of course, and so it's quite logical if you uh, weigh up the fact there are no benefits and there are risks that you'll be against them. At the moment, all the benefits are going to uh, American farmers, and I think... Uh, that isn't appreciated in Europe. As public opinion hardened, the European Union voted for a ban. No new genetically modified organisms would be commercialized until further notice, and all imported GMOs would have to be labeled. The scale of the European opposition called into question the entire future of GM food. U.S. exports would be affected but far more important to U.S. companies was the risk that American consumers might turn against GM food, which had now penetrated throughout the $600 billion U.S. food industry. At the University of New Mexico, political scientist Hank Jenkins Smith has embarked on a major opinion survey about genetically modified organisms. Do you currently eat any genetically modified foods or foods that include genetically modified ingredients? How do you feel about the following options? He wants to know if we are likely to reject GMOs, like the Europeans. The stakes are high. Food is such an intimate thing for most people. We consume those items. We take them into our bodies. Um, we're dependent on the uh, producers of those foods to make sure that they're safe, um, that they are of high quality. That's what makes it such a fascinating public policy question. In designing surveys, researchers use focus groups to get an idea of what snippets people have picked up about a controversy. Have any of you eaten? genetically modified foods to the best of your knowledge? Not knowingly. <laughs> Only roughly 20% of the people we talked to would say yes, that they do eat genetically modified organisms. A fair number simply say they don't know, and then the majority say no, they don't. <laughs> any of you ever consume any of that? Yes. Mm -hmm. We're getting close to home here? Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. This is soy oil. Oh, no. this <laughs> Soybean oil. It's soy cheese. Oil. The research is clear. Most Americans have no idea they've been eating GM foods for over five years. And when they find out, they get upset. And this is... Uh, this is and, we're, we're and, why, and, and, and why, were, and why weren't we allowed to be in on that? Yeah. What is it going to do to my daughter? What is it going to do to my eight-year-old little boy when he... You know, for reproducing later on. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be a problem? A key element of any controversy is trust. Europeans didn't trust their regulators. What about Americans? The Department of Agriculture, interestingly, gets quite high ratings of trust. Um, on a scale of 0 to 10, where 0 is not at all trusted and 10 is completely trusted, they rank close to a 7. Um, and we don't see agencies that get that high very often. Not far behind them comes the FDA. Suppose a spokesperson from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. So but as happened in Europe with mad cow disease, trust in regulators can be lost overnight. It's a critical time. If there were to be some event that galvanized public concern, you can change an issue like this substantially, as Three Mile Island did, for example, with the, with the nuclear um, technology policy debate. We haven't seen such a thing yet. More than half of the human and if it were to happen, it could be devastating. 
To the best of your knowledge, have most scientists concluded that genetically modified foods are unsafe for human consumption, safe for human consumption, or they haven't yet reached the conclusion? Unraveling the truth about GM foods means confronting some difficult questions. Are scientists tampering with nature? Will genetically modified organisms damage the environment? Does the world really need GMOs? But first, a more fundamental question. How do we know they're safe to eat? In the coming years, biotech companies have plans to introduce dozens of new genetically modified organisms. Vegetables, fruits, nuts, and more. What guarantees do we have that these GMOs will be safe to eat? We spent a long part of our history testing various things we could eat, and a lot of people have died as part of this grand experiment to see what we could consume. Here, for the first time in history, because we're introducing genes from novel sources, we're introducing genes that code for proteins we've never put in the human body. Many of them will be safe, I'm sure. Will most of them be safe? Nobody knows. You can't prove that it's safe. You can't prove that any new technology that we have in the world today is absolutely safe. Whether you have a mobile phone that you're listening to, whether that affects you, whether overhead power lines affect you, whether if you're a woman and you take a birth control pill or you take hormone replacement therapy, we cannot, in any of those circumstances, prove that it's absolutely safe. What you can do is try and minimize the risks by doing proper testing, and that's what we have to do with genetically modified foods. Biotech companies argue that's just what they've done. The new crops are tested for toxicity by feeding the genetically engineered proteins to mice in doses 1,000 times greater than humans would receive. According to Monsanto's chief operating officer, Hugh Grant, such tests have failed to find any evidence of harm. These are products, these are crops, they are technologies that have been more widely tested than any other food product that came before them in history. To test that the GM foods are substantially the same as their non-GM equivalents, company scientists compare the chemistry in minute detail. Molecule by molecule, they analyze the GM and non-GM crops. If the resulting graphs from a mass spectrometer line up exactly, the two products are chemically identical. This is what the regulators call substantial equivalence. And it's one reason GM foods normally do not require special labels. Most of these foods that are being changed are foods we know very well. Corn, soybeans, and the like. And what is being changed is usually something of very, to date, it has been something of very small uh, difference. The regulation of GMOs is shared between three agencies that treat them in the way they treat regular crops. The USDA checks they're safe to grow. The FDA checks they're safe to eat. And the EPA also gets involved with crops like BT corn that contain pesticides. I don't think we're going to have the same problems here that they have in Europe. And the simple reason why is because our food safety regulatory system is head and shoulders above anybody else's in the world. But critics worry that in regulating GMOs no differently from traditional foods, the agencies may be exposing the public to unknown risks like allergies. We know that 8% of children, 2% of adults have allergenic reaction to traditional foods. What we're dealing with is the introduction of new genetic foods that have genes that code for proteins that we've never consumed. We just don't know what the reaction is likely to be. At Cornell's Department of Food Science, scientist Joe Hotchkiss is an...